Hello everybody, my name is Kukla, welcome to Coding 101. In today's video, I'm going to be diving a bit into what is front end and what is back end. I'm realizing that more and more, I'm actually creating uh, YouTube videos or I'm creating projects that have to deal with front end and that have to deal with back end. And I've noticed that front end and back end, or as it is normally called client and server, is something that many beginners are really struggling with and they're really struggling to see the correlation between front end and back end. Backend. And some developers who are maybe a little bit um, um, advanced do not seem to understand the correlation between front end and back end. So I'm going to be using this video to really try as much as I can to explain what the difference is between front end and back end and how these two entities of programming help each other out. It is very important for you to understand these two entities. Any employer out there needs you to be well versatile in both. I am actually a full stack developer, so that means I am very versatile. I understand front end development and I also do a bit of back end development. Let me not say a bit, I do a lot of back end development. If I would have to choose between these two, I would say that back end development is something that I enjoy more than front end development. But as a full stack developer or as an aspiring full stack developer, you need to be well efficient in all these two facets of programming. But before we get into the differences between front end and back end, how about you subscribe to my channel? I drop lit content and lit videos that really help you uh, become a better programmer one video at a time. That is my objective to make you a better developer one video at a time. And if you're interested in one uh, on one sessions, please uh, contact me on my email and I will make that arrangement for you. If you, especially if you're a beginner, I could help you become a developer from beginner to advance in no time. All right, let's dive into what is actually a front-end developer compared to a back-end developer. So front-end developers work on what the user can see, while back-end developers build the infrastructure that supports it. So both are necessary comp components uh, of a high-functioning application or websites. It's not uncommon for companies to get tripped up by the front-end versus back-end divide when trying to navigate the development of a new software. After all, there are a growing number of tools on the market aimed to help uh, developers become more full-stack orientated so it's easy for non-technician to assume that there isn't a big difference between front-end and back-end development. So let's start off with front-end development. So front-end, just for by definition, front, it means that it deals with something that is in front of you. So let's say, for example, you are developing a website. So front-end has to do with how that website potentially looks. Maybe let's say you are uh, devising a login page. So first, of course, you need like some maybe uh, text input, and then you need a text input, and then over here, forgive my drawing, it's a little bit uh, messy. This is login, and then ultimately you might also need a button as well. Over here, let's just fill it up with some color. So this is how your website is gonna look. So how everything is positioned in this website is actually what we mean by front end. How everything looks and how everything is fit together visually is what we call front end development. Now for this, but for this interface to actually come to life, there are a couple of things that need to be done for it to actually come to life. Remember that the object, the objective of the login page is to authenticate the user who's trying to log in into a particular website. So let's say, for example, you are putting in your in details here, your authentication details, you put in your email and then you put in your password. And then what needs to happen after this is that those items is, are going to be taken and they're going to be compared with the already existing credentials. And if those credentials match, then you will be given access to the next page. So that middleman aspect of programming is what we call backend development. Receiving your credentials and actually comparing those credentials with the credentials that exist in a particular database that aspect of development is called back-end development, the work that is behind the scenes to deliver the information to the user. The information that is being delivered is whether or not the user's credentials are correct. So the work it takes 
for that those that information to be delivered is what we call back-end development. But what you're seeing in front of you right now is what we call front-end development. That is actually the interface, interface design. So tools to design interface design include like uh, JavaScript frameworks or libraries like uh, uh, React, AngularJS. So these are actually front-end development tools. But when we talk about Node.js, Express.js, these are back-end development tools. Because in this instant, we're going to create a server so this server is going to uh, be able to receive those credentials via the front end and the server again is going to communicate with the database and actually say hey do you have these credentials in your database if it doesn't then the the server is going to take the reply from the database and it's going to relay that message to the front end and then the front end is going to respond by saying that access denied if the credentials have not actually been found in the database. Now let's try and take a real, more realistic example with something that we just recently did. Um, I believe you do remember when we tried to do this upload photo thing, right? So this is our front end. We've actually developed, look at this. This is a very simple front end. We just used a simple uh, HTML tag. And over here, we use the Tailwind CSS in order to construct this drag and drop uh, panel over here. So this is simple HTML. So now we are able to actually, this is still a front end development. We're able to take in a file and we're able to like, uh, so now what is happening in the background, what we cannot see while this uh, wheel is spinning there is something that is happening in the background and what is happening in the background is that the file is actually being sent to the server let me just show you a bit of server development right now so it's being sent to the server by means of what we call a route so these routes are actually what are used in order for the front end to communicate with the back end that is the means of communication between the front end and the route. So you can see over here, we have a route here that says upload image. So now that image is being retrieved from the front end. So you have these uh, request and response variable that you see over here. So this request variable over here, it actually carries the information uh, that comes from the front end. So because the front end is requesting the server to do something, it needs to give the server ample information to deal with whatever request is being asked of. So in this case, this request uh, variable that you see over here is actually carrying our image file. So this is why we can access a certain object called a body inside of this request object. So we access the body and we, from the body, we access the image and we take that image and then we use Cloudinary in order to upload that image into its storage. Then once Cloudinary is done, Cloudinary, uh, by means of what we've done over here, Cloudinary is going to send us a secure URL. And after it sends us that secure URL, we're able to take that URL and send it back. So we have this response object that you see over here. This response object is actually used to communicate back to the front end. So as it communicates back to the front end, it may communicate with whatever information is being needed, or it may communicate with nothing at all. It may just say, hey, you know what? That request that you wanted us to do, we've actually done it. Or it may say, hey, that request that you did, we've actually done it, here is the proof or here is the information that you wanted. So as you can see in this case, we are able to send back to our server or to our back, our front end, the URL that is being required. And here, if there's an error, we're able to communicate once again to our front end that, hey, listen, the status 500 over here implies that there's been a server error and it's going to send the error back to the front end in order for the front end to be able to notice what might have been wrong with the request that was being sent to the server. So once the server is done, let's go back to our project. And as you can see over here, it says image upload successfully. So this message that it, we see over here is being triggered by the response that is coming from the server. This image 
this that that um dialogue box that you see is being triggered by this positive response that you see over here and so if we press ok over here we're able to now see the file that we were just uploading right now so this url is actually coming from the server after it's done doing what we asked it to do so those are the differences between the front that's the difference between the front end and the back end so just like in front end you have html css and javascript it's pretty much the same thing with back end and um, front end development so back end developers focus on the server side of website those uh, items that nobody can see those are uh, activities that nobody is really concerned with and um, uh, front-end development is more concerned with what the user can actually see so some of the tools for front-end development or some of the skills for a front-end developer include HTML CSS JavaScript uh, maybe communication skills and a bit of creativity, especially creativity. But some of the skills that are needed for back-end development may include things like SQL. You need to be familiar with many database concepts, even no SQL, MongoDB. You need Python, Java, Ruby. Uh, Problem-solving skills are necessary. You need communication skills as well. So, so all in all, all websites require front-end and back-end development. Front-end development focuses on the visual aspects of a website, the part that the user sees and interacts with. Back-end development comprises a site structure, system, data, and logic. Together, front-end and back-end development combine to create interactive and visually pleasing websites. So thank you very much for watching today's tutorial. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do press the like button. If there's any comments that you have, leave them in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time on Coding 101.